What is up, Turtle Squad? It's your boy, Eric. Welcome to Black Turtle Garage. Yes, I said garage, as you remember, uh, a long time ago. Uh, we are going to be starting a new RC portion of the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about NPRC, uh, which is no prep RC. Yeah, so it's basically uh, street racing, no prep style, in a one-tenth scale format. So today, I'm going to be go going over my car, Bonnie the Bullet, which is currently number one on the NorCal uh, top 10 list. So we do have a list that we race once a month and this car somehow luckily by the skin of my teeth made it to number one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys know what I did to get it there and give you a little bit of more of an in-depth look into my build and hopefully we can get some other guys in our list to give you guys a better idea of what they put into their cars because I know NPRC isn't necessarily new well drag racing isn't new NPRC has kind of just hopped onto the scene um, within the last year or so and it's building and it's growing and more people having the same questions so I want to make sure that I address that shout out to Tim Smith because he's the one that I got the idea from um, he had the NPRC page I contacted him and said hey is it okay if I start a NorCal version of this and he said dude go for it I want to grow this and I slowly started to see it you know spread all over the country and I haven't gotten to see other people's races yet if you do NPRC and you have an official race day and you have a no prep list and you have videos up please put them down below send them to my Facebook send them to my social media I'm more than happy to check out those videos but for now let's make sure we get into this and show you guys what we do here at the Black Turtle Garage Alright guys, so hold on, let me get myself in frame a little bit more. So this is my build right here. This is uh, Bonnie the Bullet, that's what I called her. Um, this is a tested, tuned, and beat to shit car. But, as you can see with the body, um, this is a video before I go through and I'm, I'm not calling it a rebuild because it doesn't need it right now like I said it is sitting at number one and real quick guys if you're new to the channel you're probably thinking why is this dude just having this shitty desk set up this is my workstation but as you guys know if you've been with me for a while I am currently doing a huge ish makeover of the man cave uh, and that's underway so I'm looking to have a dedicated RC workspace mostly for filming but due to budget, due to things like that, it's not ready yet. But I did want to get this video up because I did ask on Facebook and there seemed to be a, quite a bit of uh, interest in something like this. Uh, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail as far as like my specific tune, like I do have a castle motor and what I did with the castle, but I'm gonna just kind of give you a, an idea to start with. This is like a beginner's guide um, just to get you rolling because a lot of people are having trouble with that. They're asking, what chassis do I run? If I run this, do I get disqualified? Um, so what I'm going to do, give me one sec, let me put my phone out, I'm going to pull out the rules, the official NPRC rules, and we can go from there. Alright guys, so right now, let me see, I don't even know if it will show. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys right off the NPRC page, I'm not even pulling it off of my page, but basically what I did is I copied and pasted, um, just to keep it consistent. Uh, we're only going to be going over the Street Outlaw class, and that's going to be the two-wheel drive, short course, whatever, we're going to get into that. Um, there is a Pro Street class, but in NorCal we don't run that so I really just want to focus on the Street Outlaw so Street Outlaw is a short course based chassis it does have to be two wheel drive um, two cell battery max so what it means if you're new to RC lipo battery uh, lithium polymer up to two cells uh, there's no milliamp hour limit or C limit so the current limit um, what I currently use is going to be a uh, Onyx 5000 and I actually used to have this in my crawler but I kind of just went with it and it turned out 25C is enough for me. I have people running 100C, 60C, and to each their own, but I figured out that more power isn't always better, so I kind of just decided uh, to go with a 25C, 5000 milliamp hour, 7.4 volt, 2 cell, uh, 5000, like I said, 5000 milliamp lipo. Um, it has worked wonders for me. It's just enough punch to 
get it going and then I can mess with the gearing and stuff later but that's what I work with I tried a 60c in mine and it would just spin the tires and I'm sure you can do it but then it's a lot more uh, figuring out with gearing and traction weight it, it kind of just it's a whole new setup if you change the batteries the 25c has worked for me I've seen it work for other people so I'm keeping the 25c um, it must have rubber tires so I am running Proline Primes but these are the 2.8s. I see a lot of people run the 2.2s and I there's I think top three top five there's probably three people running the 2.2s. I think I'm the only one in the top running the 2.8s. Um, the reason I like the 2.8s is because ballooning. Ballooning is always going to be a factor when it comes down to high speed and RC tires. You can go through and you can belt the tires and you can do all these things to make it better but basically what happens is these things will swell up look like pancakes but the reason I like this is because when they do balloon there's a bigger contact patch to the ground more contact to the ground means more traction so it's worked really well for me um, I've gotten to the point where it's all in my in the throttle how much they balloon um, and so you can even tell right look at all those wear marks I've adjusted the camber a lot um, but you're basically I want to say the last time I ran it, this was a contact patch, and I do have to adjust that for this next weekend's run. But you know, you're you're not getting a lot of contact to the ground. But with the two twos, I think they're about half, uh, maybe about a third of the width, so you're going to get about a third of the contact patch. So um, that's definitely helped me out. In the front, I do run uh, the 2.2 Bandit front tires. I run the grooved one just because on the side they look a little bit more like slicks. Um, and it hasn't really affected the performance from the regular ones that I've, I've tried the treaded ones and it really doesn't make a difference I just like the look of those a little bit better I did paint them black um, I need to recoat that painting uh, but I like to, to match the back as far as color goes uh, let's see uh, but body must cover the wheels so that's what people have been having a lot of trouble with if you run the slash arms in the back um, and by the way this is a two wheel drive uh, slash body or slash uh, chassis and it was completely stock when I started with this I ended up switching to an LCG chassis but the main thing so we're gonna focus on the back here um, if I were to run the slash rear a arms the body sticks out about a half inch from the outside and I'll see if I can post a picture now of what it looked like before that was a no-go you couldn't run it like that and plus it didn't mess with the performance a lot because I had to raise the body higher and it just kind of turned my body into a parachute so uh, easy fix for that if you're running a slash and I know that if you're running a low C the SC10 there is a I don't know what it's called I'm gonna be honest I'm not a low, low C guy but you can do the same thing there's a there's a, a buggy that runs the shorter A arms that just bolt on um, but for this, I'm using the Bandit A-Arms. So what I did is I went to RPM. I got the the Delrin A-Arms because buy RPM once, you don't have to buy them again. Um, I did go with plastic. People kept asking, why not aluminum? Honestly, I don't see the need for aluminum. Al aluminum. Al um, uh, uh. I don't see the need for aluminum. This plastic is strong enough. I haven't had a problem with it since. It's been through four or five race days already. Probably at least 50 races already. At least half that are crashes um, from me learning. And I mean, they're still strong. They're, there's not even a scratch on them. So I, am, I don't feel the need to go uh, and do metal. It does... A big thing with this car, guys, has been where to put the weight a lot of people said you know put the weight in the rear do this and that put the weight in the front um, but I realized that a good balance of weight is really going to be what what is what is needed and it, that really depends on your driving style it depends on your motor it depends but here's what works for me so on this car I am running uh, let me pull that up so as you guys can see there the Giant X I am running a Mamba X ESC um, this is the I'm trying to see how it's what it's rated. It's a uh, up to 6s lipo. So you know, for what I'm using it, it's highly over overkill. But I like a little overkill once in a while. It's a beautiful looking ESC. 
um, it works with what I got and I got it mostly for the castle link castle link has been key you know we have we do have a laptop out there at uh, race day that if I need to you know put some more power in it take some power out I can definitely do that so castle has been amazing with that and that was honestly my main reason for looking for a Mamba X, I ended up finding one super cheap online. Um, same thing with our motor. Our motor is going to be a 5700 kV Castle uncensored motor. And the reason I went uncensored is only is just due to budget. This was originally going to kind of be like a kamikaze budget build, but it ended up turning into a, like not. So I will probably be finding something around the same kV in a censored motor. And the main reason for that being is cogging off the line. It's not a huge issue, but it does cost me a millisecond or two, and that in no prep can be the difference maker in a, with, between a win or a loss. And it has been for me in the past where it's been down to a photo. Um, I'm going to put up a picture. It's not my race, but I'm going to show you guys how close that these races can be, and that millisecond off the line can definitely be a big deal. So there is a picture now. So we're running the 5700 kV. Uh, our gearing is actually a 30 tooth pinion and an 86 tooth spur. Why you say it was working? I've had people tell me to run lower, smaller spur, higher gear, higher pinion, you know, and it, it kind of just goes, you know, to each their own. I am thinking about going to a smaller spur uh, just to kind of add a little bit more of a top end speed to it, but for now, a 3086 is working just fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, so what I'm, what else am I missing? A uh, big deal has been my rear suspension. So rear suspension is going to be a big key as well. So in the back I'm running the, so these are, you're going to kind of look at me funny. So I do have an STRC rear shock tower mount, rear shock tower. <laughs> so it's a rear, I think it's, it's STRC. This was a kind of a sponsored Somebody kind of just gave it to me and said, hey, look, I had an extra one. Why don't you take one? And it did, it did end up helping me a lot because I did have the plastic one. And under so much power, I am running uh, an unlocked diff. You would notice the plastic start to bend. So the metal has definitely taken that away. It is stiff as a board. And the suspension is actually allowing the shocks to do their job. Uh, because the shocks aren't just getting pushed up and twisted. So now uh, that was a big deal. And I'm running the Proline Power Stroke slash front in the rear so these are i think 90 mil the reason i'm doing that so this is a street racing build it's not a short course truck a short course truck you want to have a little bit of higher clearance so that's why um you're going to run that in the front as, as far as the rear the rears i think are like 120 so you're getting a huge lowering effect there um it is keeping me nice and low to the ground um but if you notice so i do have have them uh I don't know if you can kind of see in here. Oh, 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 oh. See in here, there's a black tube. And what that's going to do is going to act kind of like my limiter. So there is little to no movement in those shocks. And the reason being is I want to keep that nice and stiff. I don't want... Uh, I don't want it to twist under power or just, you know, have my belly drag in. And I found that that's kind of the perfect... Uh, the perfect travel for me and what I have going on. And like I said, it does kind of help me stay low to the ground. Uh, let me see. As far as radio receiver, I am running a... What am I running? I'm running a Spectrum DX5C as my radio uh, with the four-channel receiver in there that comes with it. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and drop it down to a three-channel when I get a chance. That would just happen to be what I had on hand. Um, if you ask me what's this in the front... So I did try to get cute in the first couple races and run the Traxxas onboard audio and it ended up just kind of cutting out and not working. Literally my throttle wouldn't work but I kept the onboard audio unit there for the weight. Um, I figured out weight in the front is going to be key because so much power uh, running the two twos, uh, the two eights with the banded arms being so tucked in, I would literally do backflips off the line. So adding a little bit of weight in the front and I try to keep it sort of so it's not just adding lead uh, lead weight to it I was adding something that would kind of be functional in a sense because I, I can still plug it in and it works um, when I pull up and it kind of helps me do cool burnouts but 
when it comes to race day, I unplug that just because uh, it, it it cost me a couple races. Um, so that's going to be the front. Let's see what else do I have. The front is running stock. Uh, the stock shocks, same same mil, uh, 90 mil, I believe. Uh, I think it's running stock slash arms. Uh, for the rear, something that I didn't, and this is kind of just me being inexperienced. When you swap to the rear A arms, make sure that you're running the rear camber links as well because they are shorter. So this link here, um, Traxxas does make aluminum ones that are adjustable. I made my own, but yeah, that's going to be a big deal because I went to put it on and literally <laughs> my hub carrier was facing down. So I didn't think that was going to work for race day, so I had to make my own. But make sure when you order your banded A-arms, order the camber links as well. Um, as far as mounting the body, I'm running the Pro-Line uh, screw top mounts. And then the last detail I get, oh, axles. I'm running... So plastic, stock, slash, uh, slash axles, but cut down. And the reason I do that is because I, this is an RC car. It's a toy. It is going to break. There's going to be stuff that breaks here and there. And do I want it to be, you know, the, the transmission or do I want the weak point to be, you know, a 30 cent axle, and I know it's not 30 cents, but I literally have tons of those axles laying around, and it takes about five minutes to get it cut to the right length, but I would much rather that be my weak point as opposed to uh, something that's bigger and would possibly take me out of a race day. This is something that I can, oh shit, my axle twisted, boom, I'm going to go ahead and just swap in a new one, I'm ready for the next race, it's the exact same axle, it's, it's cut the exact, exact same way and we're good to go so that's the main reason for that and literally like I said I've gotten 50 races out of this and I haven't messed it up once so I could just be lucky or I could just know how to drive and probably the lucky part uh, the last thing uh, you guys have seen in previous videos um, I do have the RC Racing Innovations wheel Traxxas two-wheel drive stock no it's not stock it's it these are specifically made for the RPM uh, bumper mount, uh, but these have been lifesavers, guys. Uh, they have been a difference maker. I did used to have the Traxxas uh, wheelie bar. The problem with that, it was only it only came to about right here, so it would all it would kind of stop the wheelies, but it allowed a lot more movement, uh, and it would allow my front to come up a lot higher than it really should. And so adding those extra for three or four inches has definitely kept me nose down straight ahead um, and has been a lifesaver all of the stuff that I have here I'm gonna put a parts list down below if you'd like to get your RC racing innovations uh, wheelie bar I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to that and I think I pretty much hit everything my transmission is a stock transmission stock gearing I am running an open diff I forgot to hit on that so open diff why you ask um i was originally gonna run a lock diff and i just ran into too many problems with it as much as i would really love to have both wheels spinning at the same time i i, I it could be a difference maker from experience and again this could just be on our track on our you know i anybody that's run a lock diff has run into nothing but problems either fitting it um, having it break on them, having it lock up on them, having it cause more malfunctions elsewhere. And so the pros and cons, you know, cons kind of outweighed it. And it just caused me to just say, you know what, the open diff is working for me. Once that stops working, then maybe I'll look into a lock diff. And maybe it does make a huge difference. And I have just seen the worst of the worst. But for me right now, open diff is the way to go on a real race car I would run the lock diff but an open differential really uh, it's got the planetary gears in there and it is all stock all I've done is literally take everything apart re-lube everything put the oil in there make it you know clean it up make it look real nice and make sure that maintenance is key guys maintenance uh, it doesn't have to be really crazy I've only taken the tr since I started racing I've only taken the transmission apart once 
and just redid everything. Uh, but everything else, just making sure your shocks are clean, making sure, you know, after it, what I do is I'll take some simple green and I'll spray it around uh, the electronics and try to kind of keep it off of that. Let it dry, take a compress, uh, air compressor and just blow it all off. It works wonders. It keeps that dirt off of it. Um, it's not the cleanest rig and it's not meant to be the cleanest rig, but uh, just taking those extra couple seconds does definitely help out. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. The last thing, right, people ask me the body. I'm running a Ford F100 uh, Pro-Line body. Oh, and people always ask me about my front lip. Um, this isn't anything that I bought. This is literally, so when I was cutting out the Lexan, um, this was the little lip, the edge that comes with it. So what I did is I just took my scissors and I trimmed around and made it look well, good. And what this really does, and this could all be in my head or it could be 100% science fact, who knows. But uh, it, it does definitely help me keep uh, the air just going under and keep it from parachuting. It keeps my nose down. It does, I feel like it does help me a lot. And I've actually had people say that's actually a really good idea um, and try it out. It, it looks really cool and it seems to function so that's the reason. A lot of what my, my rigs are is it seems to work so I'm going to keep it as it is until it does it and when it does it I'm going to figure out how to make something new work today. Um, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, if you guys really do like it, let me know. I'm trying to get a couple more of the guys on our top 10 list to open up about their rigs. And I don't want to say give out their secrets, but just let us know what they found that works. And their setup could probably be 100 times different than mine. I know that there's cars on the list that are faster than mine. And I know that there's cars on the list that um, they have better drivers. And it, what I've tried to build here is just a more consistent rig. I know that my rig will make it down, uh, down the road every time if I figure my shit out so it I've made it so that it's it's up to me not the car what it does so um, this setup could work for you or you could say hey this guy's a total idiot I never want to watch any of his videos again and that's totally fine this isn't gonna be a video for everybody this is just gonna be something to get you uh, running through the door and get you something set up for a race day and you could tune, tune wrench and fix it up how you feel like because that's the beauty of this of this hobby is that you can do what you want and you can build and you can tune and for me that's half the fun is I go to a race day and I say crap I got that literally happened my first my first race day I was there, I luckily I made it on the list because there wasn't that many people I was almost the last one on the list my car kept flipping over I thought I had it tuned and then I came back next race day made it to the top five and then the next race day I was uh, battling in the top three look at me now I'm number one because um, I it's just been tuning testing tuning testing and a lot of crashes in between a lot of mistakes as this body will will show you um, so you guys can see all those cracks you know this body is definitely taking its abuse so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new a new body for it, and I'll, I'll bring you guys along with it. I am building a second car. Actually, I'm building two more cars. Black Turtle Garage has gotten its first commission build um, that I'm building from the ground up for somebody, and I will be featuring that one as well once I'm done. The reason I'm not putting it up now and or during is because the owner kind of wants to keep it hush-hush until the build is done. But, uh, yeah, I will be building another one and it's kind of going to be more of just a for show car and just because I have the extra one and a, kind of a loner rig. So it's not going to be as competitive as this one, uh, mostly because I'm not just going to be throwing money at it. But yeah, guys, if you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Let me know down below what you thought. Do you think this setup would work for you or do you think I'm batshit crazy and I should not touch RCs? I don't care. Let me know down below so that I can kind of adjust and bring more content that you guys want to watch. Like I said, I do appreciate you guys watching. If you guys have any questions, look me up on Facebook and the NorCal No Prep RC Racing and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Any MPRC guy is more than happy. Look up the MPRC page, the main page. I'm going to go ahead and put it down below and see if there's a chapter in your area so you can start racing and just go out there and meet the guys. Most of the guys that I've met through MPRC have been fantastic and have been super nice. So, yeah. I think that's going to be it for this one, guys. Peace.